Hello and welcome to another edition of Nutrition Bites. I'm your host, Steve Graham, joined today by Jeanette Seda and Brittany McCauley, who are dietetic interns and gluten experts today. Thank you for joining me Thank in the studio. You. Um, so let's Hi, have guys. a chat. Gluten-free diets. This is popular. And we know it's uh, connected with celiac disease, but I, I don't feel like everyone has celiac disease. They just kind of do the diet. But let's start it off. What, what, is, what is a gluten-free diet? Well, the purpose of the gluten-free diet, uh, was, it was originally intended for people, like, like you said, with celiac disease, uh, those who are either allergic to gluten or intolerant to gluten. It's mainly, um, it's, helpful for, it's helpful for them in ways because it helps them avoid the, the certain symptoms that, that they have, that they um, get when they consume gluten. Like uh, those with celiac disease, there could be damage to the intestines, there's an inflammatory response. Uh, those with the, the allergy, um, they could have either hives, they could have an anaphylactic shock, and those who are just intol um, intolerant or sensitive to it, they may have uh, like, you know, headaches, fatigue, uh, constipation, diarrhea, you know, certain um, gastrointestinal um, symptoms in that fashion. So these, these diets are mainly geared towards them to help them avoid those symptoms. And, and what is gluten? What is causing these reactions and, and celiac disease as well? So gluten is a portion of a protein that's primarily found in wheat, barley, and rye grains. Um, so when these grains are used primarily in flour, um, so when we digest the flour, it um, goes through the intestines, and then when it reaches the small intestine in a normal healthy individual, it creates no reaction. But with those with celiac disease, it creates an inflammatory response. And what are the popular foods that, that have gluten? Can they be found here on campus, obviously, and around the city? All right, the main foods that have gluten are uh, your wheat, barley, rye. Um, so anything that, that's made out of flour that, ha that contains those ingredients, like uh, your breads, pastas, um, you find it in many baked goods, your pastries, um, cereal can be found in uh, a couple of things. Like you could find them in broth, you can find them in sauces, and even salad dressing at that. So it may seem like there's a lot of foods that are eliminated from the diet, but there are also tons of other foods that are gluten-free naturally, such as vegetables, fruits, proteins, uh, beans, legumes, and even gluten-free grains such as rice, soy, and corn. And one thing to mention, uh, for people that have these intolerances, it's really important that they avoid uh, pots, pans, certain dishes, even surfaces and utensils that may have come in contact with gluten in order to avoid the symptoms. Yeah, and it seems like many more restaurants now that you go out to have a gluten-free menu and, and the cooks are aware that people are taking on these diets Absolutely. and they don't want to have these allergic reactions. Mm -hmm. um, for the people that choose to go on the gluten-free diet or have to go on the gluten-free diet, what is the upside of it? Well, the, the, main, the main upside of the gluten-free diet, uh, once again, it's geared towards people with these conditions. Um, it's the benef it mainly benefits them because they, they, they avoid having these symptoms in the first place by avoiding these foods that have glutens in them. Uh, so for um, the, the generally healthy population, there isn't really much evidence to say that there is a benefit to it, but more like, unless you're replacing these grains with more fruits and vegetables, then that would be hopefully an okay. upside there. And you briefly mentioned earlier some of the um, risks of being gluten-free, but could you really uh, give us a more detailed response on that? Um. <laughs> So the majority of the risks of being gluten-free without actually having celiacs is that you are substituting the majority of your diet with uh, other things. So hopefully it would be fruits and vegetables, but you're risking um, uh, dietary fiber, you're missing essential vitamins and minerals in your diet by just eliminating these products to be gluten-free, even though you not necessarily need to be gluten-free. Well, fortunately, there are the substitutions that can... Mm -hmm eliminate those risks for the most part. But to sum this all up, to wrap it up as well, uh, there's plenty of foods that are altered to be gluten-free now. Um, what are the benefits or risks of those? So necessarily when they're altered, they're not necessarily the healthiest. Um, the majority of the products that were altered to be gluten-free were found to have higher sodium, sugar, and preservatives Highly within them. Um, okay. But so we suggest more or less to go towards naturally gluten-free products like fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. and then even gluten-free grains like rice. Yeah, like the, the, the main takeaway about gluten-free diets is that it's mainly geared towards people that either have, that are allergic to gluten, that have the celiac disease, which is not an allergy, but it's a different, it's, it's a disease, of course, 
But, um, and of course, those who are intolerant. So they're, they're on this diet to avoid those symptoms in the first place and to not be sick. They want to be healthy as well. And that's the main purpose of it. There's really not enough evidence to say that it's going to help somebody lose weight or that there's a, spe there's a specific health, health benefit to it, the way some people boast about. Well, there you have it. People who are not allergic to gluten or do not have celiac disease, there are better diets out there for you. Thank you, Jeanette and Brittany, for Thank joining you. us on this gluten-free edition of Nutrition Bites. This message brought to you by the LaSalle Nutrition Department.